Okay, so here is an example of a fence post capital that is completely rotted out. And here is the new 3D printed version. Beautiful. Greetings, it's Jerry here. I'm an advocate for 3D printing. I think it's a fantastic technology. The only problem with it is I don't think you really get much out of it unless you can create your own objects in CAD. Now, I'm gonna show you a really simple technique that allows you to do practical things. This is a fence post capital that I have created to replace the ones that are rotting out on my railing at home. And you can see it is very, very close. But the technique that I used to create this is incredibly simple. This is something else that I've created. It's a drip tray for my LG ThinQ refrigerator, which doesn't have a drip tray. And you can see it's quite a distinctive shape and would be quite difficult to model in a CAD program. You would think, except I have a technique that simplifies everything. And it just involves taking a picture on your mobile phone, importing that picture into the CAD package, and then tracing out the shape of the object that you want to create. Now, this is incredibly simple. So I have created a tutorial where I will show you how I generated this 3D copy of this fence capital and the tutorial is less than 15 minutes from start to finish it's using fusion 360 and it assumes that you've never used a cad package before it's that simple if you like the sound of that please join me think about subscribing to my channel give me a thumbs up and please if you use this technique to create something please leave a comment and let me know it makes the effort of creating these videos worthwhile just a reminder, I categorize all of my videos into different playlists. So if you're interested in 3D printing, there'll be a 3D printing playlist. But if you're interested in one of my other types of videos, check out those playlists. You might find more videos to enjoy. So let's get started. All right, so I'm gonna be quick here. There are plenty of tutorials out on the internet on how to use Fusion 360. I just wanna show you my workflow for getting this done. So the first thing we need to do is insert the picture of the fence post capital or the fence topper. So we go insert canvas and insert from my computer. And this is the profile picture. And then I just need to choose a plane. And I just go okay. So you can see that we now have a picture of the capital. We'll look down on it and uh, let's move it around. Now, I like to have it a little darker than that. So I'll just show you how you can get into the properties of that. So if we go over here into the browser, the tree here, we can see that there is this profile that's what that is and we can go edit canvas and it brings up this dialogue here and we can adjust it and I'm going to make it a bit darker okay so we have the picture in there and what we're going to do is we're going to trace around part of it but we need to get the scale right and so the way to get the scale right is that you right mouse click on the profile and you go to calibrate then you need to choose two points that you know the distance between. Now I know that the distance, the width of this popsicle stick is 8.65 millimeters. Right, so when we did that, what we did was we scaled everything that's there. So now when we trace it, it is actually going to be to scale. So the next step is to create a sketch. So we go up to here, create sketch. So the next step is I want to draw a line to get the midpoint um, of the object. 
So I'm going to draw it a, what I, to what I think is the right width of this. So obviously, the better the picture is, the more accurate you're going to be. Okay, so I've, I've drawn a line into the middle. And what I want to do is I want to cut this in half. And so what I, I can draw another line. If I bring my cursor over, when it reaches the exact center of that line, you get that little triangle. And that means that if I draw straight up, um, that is going to be the center. And then if I want to get rid of that line, I don't no longer need it. And I want to change the height of this to, to basically be the correct height. Now, because my profile isn't exactly flat, this is a little bit out and you'll see that um, in a moment. Um, and it looks to me as though the line isn't quite in the center, but that could just be, um, that could just be you know, my impression. The thing is we are going to be able to change these later on and we are going to do some scaling in the real world once we finish this. So we'll just move on to the next section. So now we've got that, we wanna go over here and to get fit point spline, click on that. And this is going to allow us to trace the edges. Um, I'm going to just do this very quickly. Um, to go, I can get rid of that line by going hitting the backspace. Um, now I found that the trick here is actually to use the least amount of points that you can, it tends to be more accurate. But I'm just going to quickly do this so that you get the idea. So you can go back and adjust this any time that you want. Um, but you have to remember this is a profile of a round object. So it's not quite the same. as you may, you know, it's not a matter of just tracing it exactly. You have to sort of think about the three dimensions because this picture isn't perfect. So for instance, if I um, trace all the way around to here, right, which I'll just do just to, as an example, right? So this is what I was trying to achieve, right? That we now have an object. But the thing is that I know that it's not going to work out that way. That actually it looks like the, the base isn't round. The base is flat across. It just looks that way um, because of the picture. I'm just going to um, put a line across there. and move that up. Okay, so now that you can see that we have essentially the shape of the object, and I can go over here on the left-hand side and I can click this little eye button to get rid of the picture if I want. So now I have this sketch, which is half of what we want. So to make this a solid, what we're gonna do is we're gonna select the sketch and we're gonna go create 
and go down to Revolve. Okay, and so the profile that has already been selected and now we need the access, um, the access. And so we wanna click here and voila, there it is. How's that? Wasn't that simple? So the more time that you take into getting the profile correct, um, you know, it means that it's going to come out better. Um, but I think that's pretty good uh, for a really quick attempt. Now, another thing that we can do um, is we can, now that we have a three dimensional object, is we can check how close we got it to the real object size. So we can go up here and go measure and we can click on the bottom. And it says here that the diameter is 86, it's almost 87, right? Well, I know by measuring um, the actual bottom of the physical object, I'll do that right now with my calipers, you can't see it, but I'm putting some calipers on there, and it's coming up as 82. So we've got 82, is what it will be in the real world um, and what we've produced because of the way that you know we put the center line in and stuff like that um, it's slightly bigger now we can scale it you know if we were to take um, you know 82 and divide it by 87 times it by 100, right? We get 94%. So if we scale this to 94% of the size, um, then that will be much closer um, to the real size uh, in the real world. Now we can do it here, or we can do it when we 3D print it. Um, so we can select the body and go to modify and go to scale and uh, scale type uniform and we want to put that at 0.94 okay so now if we go back and inspect it we measure it we're getting, you know, pretty close to, to 82, which is what it is in the real world. Cool, all right. So we've created our object. Now we just need to export it so that we can 3D print it. So the way that we can do that is we can go over here. I haven't saved this, probably should, but um, we go here and we go right mouse click and go save as mesh and uh, STL is the format that we want. Um, you can actually send it to a 3D printer utility. We're not going to do that. We're just going to go, okay. Okay, it wants me to save it. As an STL file. And save to my computer, to my desktop. Bam. There we go. Okay, and you can see here on my desktop is Fence Capital One STL. Oh, you can even, the Windows will even through, uh, give you a preview. Excellent. Okay, so that's how we design it. The next step is printing it. This is a Creality Slicer. If you are using, you can use different uh, software to do the slicing. I'm not going to go into any great detail here. I just show you the process. So basically we have our model, which we put on our desktop, Fence Capital One. And um, there it is. That's showing you in the print bed of my printer. And um, you can see here 
um, that it is showing some red lines here. Uh, I think that might indicate that it's a little bit worried that um, it might not print 100% because it needs support. Um, but because this is essentially a round object and the printhead is going to be moving around in layers, um, I think it'll be okay. The only real way of, of knowing is to actually print it. Um, and I'll just have a look at my print settings here. So um, I made the wall thickness five uh, to make it a little bit thicker, um, the thicker outer wall. Uh, you have, it's something that you have to play with. And I made the bottom layers 10, so it's got a really thick bottom. Um, now, the seam alignment, uh, as you've seen um, in the beginning, I've got a seam that runs all the way down the side of the, the 3D print. Uh, there are other options where you can get it to try and hide the seam by randomly starting at different places. Um, I just use this. This is sort of the standard um, settings. So my infill density is at 10% and the infill pattern is cubic. These are just standard things. If it's basically the infill is how, how much internally do you want it to be um, filled in. So you could put it 100% and it would be solid, but it would take a very long time to print. So at 10%, I think with a thicker outer wall, I think that's perfect. It takes around about seven hours, I think, to, to print this. But anyway, so essentially you have your model, you load it into the slicer, you hit slice. And it literally slices it into tiny little layers. And there are all the layers there. And that's it. Just a matter of saving. Oh, it's even giving me an estimated time of 10 hours and 42 minutes. It's only an estimate. I think it's more like eight hours or set, set, um, seven and a half hours or something like that in reality. Because it depends on the printer that you're using um, and it can't 100% calculate it. So then you save that to a file. Okay, and uh, that file will be G code. That's what the printer is able to understand. And that's it. It's just a matter of uploading it to your printer and hitting print. So you can see the seam there. We can get rid of that fairly easily by just using a bit of sandpaper. Um, I don't really care. Okay, so I haven't tried too hard to get rid of that seam. If you really want to do a good job and get rid of every mark, you can actually spray this with automotive filler, you know, in a can, like the finishing coat, and then sand it back. You can get it as, as good as you want it, but that's good enough for me right now. So let's paint it. Okay, so here is an example of a fence post capital that is completely rotted out and here is the new 3d printed version beautiful all right i guess that's it for this video i'll catch you in the next one ciao